Hello, Livingston here, and I'm going to show you how we got this shot from this to that. I posted these images last week and people were quite interested in it, so let me break it down quickly for you to see. If I turn down the exposure, this is the picture in the studio. You can see the backgrounds and all the lines behind there. Let me reset that. And quickly, let's jump into Photoshop so you can see how this was done. So this is the original image. And when I bring it in here, I'll do my basic frequency separation, dodge and burn, and then color correction to bring in the contrast to clean the skin and all. Um, now let's create the 3D background, the CGI 3D background. So the first one that I did was this. So you can see that that's half of it, half of the, the left side of the wall being created. And then I would adjust it a little bit. Then I'll create the right wall. You can see the lines forming behind it. Then I'll adjust that one as well. So that's a different uh, color shade. It's a bluish shade. And then I created the top. Then the floor. Now, what is important is that you have to follow the perspective of the image that you shot at. So you have to see where the lines do cross and meet. And from how she's standing or based on the original, if I jump back into this, you can see the line falls right along the just below the knee and the calf area. So I should follow that same thing, just the knee and the calf area. So if this was to go this way straight, or if I were to draw a line, an imaginary line, let me bring this line down here, you would see that this is where it falls at. So every line that I create, every perspective that I create has to meet around here. So when I was creating this, I had these lines going through left and right. I had this one coming here into the center. That's the dead center of hair these are just guidelines to help you see where you would merge all these lines into it but that is what it is so i created the floor and then i think that the the sky has already been uh, chopped out as you can see in the triangle over here so just correct the floor as well now when i was making this i used the gradient tool this is the gradient tool around here to give that light fall off so the light is coming from the right side here to the left side so i'd always drag the gradient to this side and since this is the background the light would hit it first and then it would get darker down here as the shadow falls and so you drag it along like this but this side the the light wouldn't hit this right wall so you wouldn't put the light so much over there so you darken it up that is what those gradients above the right wall in this layer was for so if I take all these and I merge them together, this is what I get. Now I have this with some two adjustments on it. One is for contrast, that's the levels, and the other one is the hue. So I matched the tone of the model's outfit, which is sort of like teal green to the background that I created. So this group copy is a merged layer of what I just created below. And then I went to the skies. So this is an image that I took in Canada and this image is what I used for the skies. I liked how the skies look and it was quite fast. So it would give that long perspective because it's a wide angle shot. So if I take that and I bring it here, if I throw that on the sky space that I created, you would see it fall over this. So that's a small section of the larger image that I took. And then I color graded that to bring it into the green tone as well. And that is all in a group. So finally, I need to take the model out so that I can separate the background from the model. So that's what I did over here. I selected it out and this is what it is. Uh, then did some few color grading. Now with the light coming from the left to the right, as I said, I wanted to give the impression that there's another section of the source of light that is a hard light that is casting a hard shadow on the wall. So I used the curves layer and then I increased up. I increased the exposure a little bit and then just masked the the hard light of it so this is what it becomes and this is how this image was done now a key thing here was to blend the original background with the the, the background that I have created the CGI background that I've created so if you come down to this layer you can see that the opacity for this layer is really low that's at 28 the same goes for the groups so that there's a nice blend between the original studio background that I shot so that I can maintain the shadows that falls that I used. I have a reflective floor so you can see that there's a bit of a reflection down here. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but that is what it is. And um, 
one more thing that I need to mention is that I created that this layer is to add a texture to the background to the wall because walls are not smooth so you add a bit of texture to it so if I zoom in closer you can see all the little details of the texture over here and that is what gives that realistic feel to the picture so merge everything together and that is what you get so this is the before and the after before and the after so that is how we got these images so I hope that you learned something and if you have any more questions please feel free to ask if not Livingston, I am out. See you next time. Bye-bye.